ഭാഗങ്ങളിലേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുപോവുകയും സൽക്കരിക്കുകയും ചെയ്ത പ്രിയ സഹോദരി സഹോദരന്മാരോടും ഞങ്ങളുടെ നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു ദൈവം നിങ്ങളെ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കട്ടെ പ്രതിഫലം തരട്ടെ that all those who took us to different places and a and gave us to eat and all that took care of us we really thank you from the bottom of my heart let the lord help you nan sadharanayayi adhigam malayali conventions na kshanam swigarikkarilla and most of the time i do not accept inv- uh, invitations from malayali uh, pedicast uh, organizations for their conventions എന്റെ സ്വന്തം ജനമായ മലയാളികളോട് സ്നേഹം ഇല്ലാഞ്ഞിട്ടല്ല നോട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഡു നോട്ട് ലവ് മലയാളീസ് ആസ് ഐ എം വൺ നമ്മുടെ മധ്യത്തിൽ ധാരാളം പ്രാസംഗികരുണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് പ്രാസംഗികർ കുറവുള്ള കൂട്ടത്തിലൊക്കെ പോയി പ്രസംഗിക്കുന്നതിലാണ് എനിക്ക് താല്പര്യം ബിക്കോസ് देयर ആർ ലാർജ് ആ പ്രീച്ചേഴ്സ് അമങ് us and so i like to go in and minister unto people where there is lack of preachers പ്രതീകിച്ച ഭാരതത്തിലെ മിഷണറി നീഡ്സിനെ കുറിച്ച് ആവശ്യങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് അറിഞ്ഞുകൂടാത്ത ധാരാളം ജനങ്ങൾ ലോകത്തിന്റെ വിവിധ ഭാഗങ്ങളിലുണ്ട് അവരുടെ ഒക്കെ ഇടയ്ക്ക് പോയി പ്രസംഗിക്കുന്നതാണ് എനിക്ക് താല്പര്യം കഴിഞ്ഞ ആഴ്ച ഞാൻ ഗ്വാട്ടിമാലായിലായിരുന്നു ഇന്ത്യയിലെ ആവശ്യങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് സുവിശേഷ ആവശ്യങ്ങളെ കുറിച്ച് പ്രസംഗിക്കുവാനുള്ള അവസരം ഉള്ളതുകൊണ്ട് സെൻട്രൽ അമേരിക്കയിലെ രാജ്യമായ ഗ്വാട്ടിമാലായിലായിരുന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞ ആഴ്ച ഞാൻ പ്രസംഗിച്ചു കൊണ്ടിരുന്നു the need especially concerning india ee varshathil logathinte pala rajyangalile poguvan kartha avasaram oriki already iniyum chila rajyangalile iniyum pogendathund and lord enable me to travel to many countries to minister and again i have to travel to many more countries to minister ennali chanam karthavinte vileri dasan pastor stephenson oru varsham munbu enne chenichappol ഞാൻ സന്തോഷത്തോടെ സ്വീകരിച്ചു സ്വീകരിച്ചതിൽ ഞാൻ സന്തോഷിക്കുന്നു ഈ ദിവസങ്ങൾ എനിക്കും വളരെ അനുഗ്രഹകരമായിരുന്നു ഞാൻ എന്റെ ശുശ്രൂഷയിൽ എന്തെങ്കിലും വിവരക്കേടുകൾ പറഞ്ഞെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾ എന്നോട് ക്ഷമിക്കണം ഉത്തരവാദിത്തങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ ഏറ്റെടുക്കുന്നു പലരും എന്നോട് എന്റെ സാക്ഷ്യം പറയണം പറയണം എന്ന് ഈ ദിവസങ്ങളിൽ പല പ്രാവശ്യം പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു താല്പര്യപ്പെടുന്നു but i also want to share my testimony along with it enal ningal vanna ende kada kelkuvan alla devojanathin kelkuvan aanu and you all came not to listen what i want to say but what the lord want to say adond devojanathil ninnum shushushipan thalpariyapadunu and that is why i want to minister from the word of god naala ningal kellavarkum jolikku povandavaranu enikku ariya i know that all of you have to go to work tomorrow adond 9 maniyodu kuda thanne shushusha niruthuvan aanu njan thalpariyapadunathu and so by 9 o'clock itself i want to end by ministry adond idellam cheyuvan karthavu enikku krupa tharan ningal artikana and so all to be finished the lord should give me grace please continuously pray stotram hallelujah amen hallelujah amen ellam therichu thiruvan karthav krupa tharu ningal prarthicha and just pray so that the lord will give you give us all grace kuri indatha ratrile chindike kuri vakyamayi namukku rendu patros moonam adhyayam adinde പത്ത് മുതലുള്ള വാക്യങ്ങൾ വായിക്കാം അവിടെ നാം ഇങ്ങനെ വായിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവിന്റെ ദിവസമോ കള്ളനെ പോലെ വരും ആകാശം കൊടുമുഴക്കത്തോടെ ഒഴിഞ്ഞു പോകും the heavens will disappear with the roar മൂല പദാർത്ഥങ്ങൾ കത്തി എഴുകിയും ആകാശം ചുട്ടഴിവാനും മൂലപദാർത്ഥങ്ങൾ വെന്തുരുകുവാനുമുള്ള ദൈവ ദിവസത്തിന്റെ വരവ് കാത്തിരുന്നും ബന്ധപ്പെടുത്തിയും കൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾ എത്ര വിശുദ്ധ ജീവനവും ഭക്തിയും ഉള്ളവരായിരിക്കണം കേവലം എഴുപത് വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുൻപ് ഈ വാക്യങ്ങൾ വെട്ടിത്തരമാണെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ് ഇതിനെ അപലപിച്ചിട്ടുള്ള 
ആളുകൾ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു and even 70 years ago people called this particular process foolishness and had disregarded it കാരണം ഇവിടെ എഴുതിയിരിക്കുന്നു മൂലപദാർത്ഥങ്ങൾ കത്തി അഴിയുമെന്ന് because here it is written the elements will be destroyed by fire കേവലം 70 വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുൻപ് പോലും 80 വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുൻപ് പോലും മൂലപദാർത്ഥം നശിക്കില്ല എന്നാണ് ശാസ്ത്രം പഠിപ്പിച്ചിരുന്നത് almost 78 years ago it was uh, the science had already said the elements will never be destroyed matter is indestructible annaan shastram padipichirunnathu and the science had taught that matter is indestructible naan ningalode vivarikkande avashyamilla innu aa tattvam shastram tirithi ezhudi and i do not have to describe it further today science has re- recanted that aa mukkuvanaya vaavapetta patrosine thengana arivu kitti 2000 varshangalukku munbe how did a fisherman called peter did have the revelation the devathinte vajanam ayidu kondana because this is the word of god enikku enne kurichu vivarichu prasangipan in ratri samayam illa i do not have the time to go describe for the nam kaanunnathu sagalavum nashikkuvan pogeyaanu ennu patros annu ezhudi innu nam adinde vakkil vannu theerikkukeyaanu and whatever we see will be destroyed that's what peter wrote and we have come to the point where it is going to happen nammude rajyam india ulpade innu nuclear powers ay maari irikkukeyaanu and today we see most the many many countries in the world including india have become nuclear power randanmar varikkunna north korea yum pakistan um india poleyulla mattu rajyangalum nuclear powers aayi kaiyumbo പത്രോസിന്റെ പ്രവചനം നിവർത്തീകരിക്കപ്പെടുവാൻ അധികം താമസമില്ല എന്ന് ചിന്തിക്കുന്നവർക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കുവാൻ കഴിയും നോർത്ത് കൊറിയ പാകിസ്ഥാൻ ഇന്ത്യ വെൻ ദേ ബിക്കം സ്ട്രോങ് ന്യൂക്ലിയർ പവേഴ്സ് വി നോ ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് പീറ്റർ റോട്ട് വുഡ് ബി ഫുൾഫിൽ പ്രിയ സഹോദര പ്രിയ സഹോദരി നീ പ്രിയമെന്ന് പ്രിയമെന്ന് കരുതി സൂക്ഷിച്ചു വെക്കുന്ന സകല വസ്തുക്കളും നിന്റെ മനോഹരമായ സാരി നിന്റെ നല്ല ഷർട്ട് നിന്റെ സൂട്ട് നിന്റെ വീട് നിന്റെ കാറ് yellam venderiyan bogeyana dear children of god what you consider as precious and have kept it in a safe place your precious sarees your precious shirts your precious ties everything is going to be destroyed by fire angana venderiyan bogunnadagaya and because it is going to be destroyed by fire endu cheyanam na vatrosa nammoda parayunnathu what does peter ask us to do ാണ് we should always understand that we are strangers in this world nammude avarudeyum perumaatam kandal thonum naam ivada 15000 varsham vasikkan pogaanu thonum and many people think when they act as if they are going to live here for 10000 years no my brother no my sister we are sojourners here we are strangers here we our residence here is not permanent it is transient it is temporary naam idilogude poguna വഴി യാത്രക്കാർ മാത്രമാണ് വി ആർ ജസ്റ്റ് ട്രാവലേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് പിൽഗ്രിംസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വേൾഡ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ദൈവ ദിവസത്തിന് വേണ്ടി കാത്തിരിക്കുക ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് വൈ വി ഹാവ് ടു വെയ്റ്റ് അപ്പോൺ ദ ഡേ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് രണ്ടാമത് പത്രോസ് പറയുന്നു നാം വിശുദ്ധ ജീവനും ഭക്തിയും ഉള്ളവരായി ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ്ലി പീറ്റർ സേസ് യു ഷുഡ് ലിവ് ഹോളി ആൻഡ് ഗോഡ്ലി ലൈഫ്സ് ആ ദൈവ ദിവസത്തിന് വേണ്ടി കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നുവെങ്കിൽ ഒരു വിശുദ്ധി വിശുദ്ധി ഭക്തി നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കണം ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് വി ആർ വെയ്റ്റിംഗ് അപ്പോൺ ദ ഡേ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ദൻ വി ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് എ ഹോളി ആൻഡ് ഗോഡ്ലി life adine kurichum samsaripa ani ratri samayam enikkilla i do not have the time to elaborate on that na moonamada vatros parayini oru sangathi undu but third thing the peter is describing vishuddhiyum bhaktiyum ullavarai jeevichal maatram pora not only that you have to live holy and godly life ee deiva divasathinte varavu kaathirunnal maatram pora not only that you have to wait upon the day of god ennal ee deiva divasathinte varavu nam bethapaduthugeyum venam and not only that we have to speed the coming of the lord 
ഞാനെ ശ്രദ്ധിച്ച് ഭക്തിയുള്ളവരാണ് വിശുദ്ധിയുള്ളവരാണ് നല്ലൊരു ഭാഗവും ദൈവ ദിവസത്തിന്റെ വരവ് കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നവരാണ് രണ്ടും മാത്രം പോരാ മൂന്നാമത് ഒരു കാര്യം കൂടെ ചെയ്യുവാൻ സകല വിശ്വാസികൾക്കും ഉത്തരവാദിത്വമുണ്ട് പരിപാടിയിൽ വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന സമയത്തെ എനിക്കും നിങ്ങൾക്കും എങ്ങനെ ബന്ധപ്പെടുത്താൻ കഴിയും how can we hasten the coming or english tarjama hasten the coming or or english tarjama speed the coming mula bhashil upayogichirikkunna vaakku spedeyo enna greek padamana adil ninnana english il speed enna vaakku vannirikkunnathu nalla tarjamiya speed enganeya enikkum ningalkkum deiva divasathinte varavine speed cheyan pattunnathu how can you and me can speed the coming of the lord evam ഈ വെളിപ്പാട് തന്നിട്ടുള്ളവർ ഇവിടെ ധാരാളം ഉണ്ടെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിശ്വസിക്കും ഈ വെളിപ്പാട് എനിക്ക് ലഭിച്ചപ്പോൾ അത് എന്റെ ജീവിതത്തെ അപ്പാടെ രൂപാന്തരപ്പെടുത്തി എന്നെ ഞാൻ ഈ വിഷയം പ്രസംഗം പ്രസംഗിക്കുമ്പോ ധാരാളം ആളുകൾ തെറ്റിദ്ധരിക്കാറുണ്ട് അതുകൊണ്ട് വേറൊരു കാര്യം മലയാളികളുടെ അധികം പ്രസംഗിക്കാൾക്ക് പുസ്തകം നല്ലപോലെ അറിയാം ബിക്കോസ് മലയാളീസ് നോ ദുക്ക് വെരി വെൽ അവർ പലപ്പോഴും വരുന്നത് പ്രാസംഗിക മാർക്കിടാനാണ് എനിക്ക് മാർക്ക് അധികം വേണ്ട അതുകൊണ്ട് മാറി നിന്നോളാം and that is why i thought i do not need much grade so i am going to stay away adu mathramalla parayunnadalla kekkunnathu and not only that what is said is not what they hear olla satya avare and that is the truth i'm saying parayunnadalla kekkunnathu what is said is not what you hear parayunnathu avarku thonunnadha kekkunnathu and sometimes they take what they think they heard chicago ilulla vishwasigal angane ullavaralla and chicago's believers are not like that stotram amen enganeya how ഈ ദൈവ ദിവസത്തിന്റെ വരവ് ബന്ധപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു Don't forget what I said. വളരെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ആ മറക്കരുത് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ഡോണ്ട് ഫോർഗെറ്റ് ദയവായിട്ട് താഴെ പുറത്തോട്ട് ഇറങ്ങി പറയരുത് ആ ജോർജ് സീക്വറോട് വന്ന് ദുരുപദേശം പ്രസംഗിച്ചു ചോ ആൻഡ് ഡോണ്ട് ഗോ ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് ആൻഡ് സേഡ് ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ജോർജ് സീക്വറോട് ഹി കൻ കം എനി ടൈം ഐ ബിലീവ് ഇൻ ദി ഇമ്മിനന്റ് കമ്മിങ് ഓഫ് ദി ലോർഡ് ജീസസ് ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ആമേൻ അത് ആ തിയോളജിക്കൽ ടേം ഇമ്മിനന്റ് കമ്മിങ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ദി തിയോളജിക്കൽ ടേം ഇസ് ഇമ്മിനന്റ് കമ്മിങ് ഓഫ് ദി ലോർഡ് എന്നാൽ അതേ സമയം തന്നെ ഞാൻ വേറൊരു കാര്യം വിശ്വസിക്കുന്നു ബട്ട് ഐ ബിലീവ് ഓൺ ദി സെയിം ആസ്പെക്ട് അനദർ തിങ് തന്റെ വരവിനെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള അനേക പ്രവചനങ്ങൾ ഈ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ എഴുതിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അത് നിവർത്തിയാകാതെ തമ്പുരാൻ വരത്തില്ല देयर आर many prophecies about his coming that is written here unless that is fulfilled he will not come വിഷയം മനസ്സിലായോ Do you understand the issue? Guru Vedasham parannu parayirudha. Don't say that I gave you false teaching. 1948 nu mumbinu kartavinu varan sadikkathilla irunnu ennu vishwasikkunna aala kaaranam anne pudhiya nima israel pudhiya rajyam praabichullu. Adu adu sambhavikkano ennu ezhuthittundu thaan varunnenu. And before 1948 Christ could not come because Israel had to be a new land and it was prophesied. Vishayam manasilavunnundo. Do you understand? അതുപോലെ വേറൊരു സംഗതിയും നടക്കണമെന്ന് തിരുവചനത്തിൽ എഴുതിയിട്ടുണ്ട്. There is one more thing that has to happen according to the word of God. അത് മനസ്സിലാക്കി കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ അതെന്റെ ജീവിതത്തെ രൂപാന്തരപ്പെടുത്തി. അതോടെ സാക്ഷ്യത്തോടുള്ള ബന്ധത്തെ പറയുകയാ. And when that I understood that changed my life I'm going to say in terms of my testimony. അതെന്താ? What is it? ദൈവത്തിന് തന്റെ സഭ സകല ജാതിയിലും സകല ഭാഷയിലും ഉണ്ടാകണം എന്ന് നിർബന്ധമുണ്ട് and because the lord wants that his church be established in all nations and in all languages വെളിപാട് പുസ്തകം അഞ്ചാം അധ്യായത്തിൽ അത് വളരെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ട് എഴുതി in revelation chapter 5 it is written very clearly എനിക്ക് അത് എടുത്ത് പ്രസംഗിക്കണമെന്ന് താല്പര്യമുണ്ട് സമയമില്ല നിങ്ങൾ വീട്ടിൽ പോയി വായിച്ചാൽ മതി and i want to say it but because of lack of time i'm not going to go into it വെളിപാട് പുസ്തകം അഞ്ചാം അധ്യായത്തിൽ 
ആരാധ്യത്തിൽ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ സഭ സ്വർഗത്തിൽ ദൈവ കുഞ്ഞാടിന്റെ മുൻപാകെ ആരാധിക്കുന്ന ചിത്രം നമുക്ക് കാണുവാൻ കഴിയും ദൈവത്തിന്റെ കുഞ്ഞാടിനെ ദൈവസഭ ആരാധിക്കുമ്പോ ഇരുപത്തിനാല് മൂപ്പന്മാർ തങ്ങളുടെ കിരീടങ്ങൾ ദൈവ കുഞ്ഞാടിന്റെ മുൻപാകെ എറിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ദൈവ കുഞ്ഞാടിനെ ആരാധിക്കുമ്പോ ുംഭാഗീണു and they sang a new song avaru gunyadinna munbaga veenu they fell before the lamb priyamullore marakkarudu gunyadana swargathile aaradhana vishayam and you have to always remember that lamb is the point of worship jehova saachikaram padipikkunna yeshuvine aaradhikkirathu na padipikkunna and the jehova witnesses they do not worship jesus nammude kootathilum chela jehova saachikal aayittundu and there are some people among us who became jehova witnesses avarku marubadi parayvan pusthakam sherikku padikkanam and to answer to them you have to learn the bible jehova saachiyude cardinal doctrine aan yeshuvine aaradhichu kooda and the cardinal doctrine of jehova witnesses you cannot worship jesus സാക്ഷി പറയുന്നത് യേശു ഒരു സൃഷ്ടിയാണ് പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ബിക്കോസ് യഹോവ വിറ്റ്നസ് ടീച്ചസ് ദാറ്റ് ജീസസ് ഇസ് എ ക്രിയേഷൻ ആ യേശു ഒരു സൃഷ്ടിയാണ് യഹോവയുടെ സൃഷ്ടിയാണെന്ന് അവർ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നു ആൻഡ് ദേ സേ ദാറ്റ് ജീസസ് ഇസ് എ ക്രിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് യഹോവ അവരുടെ വിചാരം യഹോവ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ പിതാവാണെന്നാണ് ആൻഡ് അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ദം യഹോവ ഇസ് ദി ഫാദർ ചില ബന്ധക്കോസ്കാരെ വിചാരിച്ച് വെച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് യഹോവ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ പിതാവാണെന്ന് ആൻഡ് സം പെന്റികോസ്റ്റ്സ് ആൾസോ ബിലീവ് യഹോവ ഇസ് ദി ഫാദർ പുസ്തകം ശരിക്ക് പഠിക്കാഞ്ഞിട്ടാണ് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ ഡോണ്ട് ലേൺ ദി ബൈബിൾ യഹോവ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ പഴയ നിയമത്തിലെ പുത്രന്റെ വെളിപ്പാട് ആണ് പിതാവിന്റെ വെളിപ്പാടല്ല and if you look at it clearly the jehovah is the revelation of the son But not of the father സമയം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു എടുത്തു വാക്യങ്ങൾ എടുത്ത് കാണിച്ചു തരായിരുന്നു and if there was more time i would have shown you verses jehovah ye manushyar darshi pala manushyar darshichittund and many people have seen the jehovah na pidavine aarum oru kaalathum kandittilla na adhiru vajanathil But the word of god says nobody has seen the father hallelujah hallelujah arayil oru sothra ennu onnu parayane amen ാണോ <laughs> അല്ല 24 ആണ് it is 24 പഴയ നിയമ പിതാക്കന്മാരായ 12 ഗോത്ര പിതാക്കന്മാർ and these are the old testament fathers of the tribe പഴയ നിയമ അപ്പോസ്തോലന്മാരായ 12 പേര് and the new testament apostles to the രണ്ട് ഗ്രൂപ്പിനെയും സിംബോളിക് ആയി റെപ്രസെന്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നവരാണ് 24 മൂപ്പന്മാര് and symbolically they are the ones that is represented as the church of god the whole church of god from that means the whole church of god abraham mudala adam mudala from adam abraham isaac and jacob and isaac വിധത്തിലുള്ള പഴയ നിയമ വിശുദ്ധന്മാരും ഏബ്രഹാം ഐസക് ജേക്കബ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദി ഓൾഡ് ടെസ്റ്റമെന്റ് സെയിൻസ് പഴയ നിയമത്തിലെ സകല വിശുദ്ധന്മാരും ന്യൂ ടെസ്റ്റമെന്റ് ഓൾ സെയിൻസ് ഉന്നാടിന്റെ രക്തത്താൽ വീണ്ടെടുക്കപ്പെട്ട സകല മനുഷ്യരും ഓൾ ദോസ് വർ റിഡീംഡ് ബൈ ദി ബ്ലഡ് ഓഫ് ദി ലാംബ് ഓൾ മെൻ അബ്രഹാം എങ്ങനെ രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടത് ആൻഡ് അബ്രഹാം എങ്ങനെ ഹൗ വാസ് ഏബ്രഹാം റിഡീംഡ് എങ്ങനെ ആദാം രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടത് ഹൗ വാസ് ആഡം റിഡീംഡ് എങ്ങനെ ഐസക്കിയൽ രക്ഷപ്പെട്ടത് ഹൗ വാസ് ഇസക്കിയൽ ഗട്ട് സേവ് എങ്ങനെ ദാവീദ് രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടത് ഹൗ ദേവിഡ് ഗട്ട് സേവ് നമ്മുടെ എല്ലാം വിചാര ഇവരൊക്കെ ഏതാണ്ട് കുടുക്ക് പണി വേണ്ടി ചെയ്ത് അങ്ങ് സ്വർഗ്ഗത്തിൽ കേറി ആൻഡ് സംതിങ് ദാറ്റ് ദേ സംതിങ് ദാറ്റ് ദേ ഓൾ ഡിഡ് സം ഷോർട്ട് കട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് ഹെവൻ കുഞ്ഞാടിന്റെ രക്തത്താൽ കഴുകപ്പെടാത്ത ഒരു വ്യക്തി പോലും സ്വർഗ്ഗത്തിൽ ഇല്ല ഒരു വ്യക്തി ഇതുവരെയും രക്തത്താൽ കഴുകപ്പെടാതെ രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടിട്ടില്ല ഇനി രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെടാനും പോകുന്നില്ല കാൽവറി കുരിശാണ് സകലരുടെ രക്ഷയുടെ മാർഗം അൺലെസ് വാഷ് ബൈ ദി ബ്ലഡ് ഓഫ് ദി ലാം നോബഡി കാൻ ബി സീൻ ഇൻ ഹെവൻ ആൻഡ് ടിൽ ദി എൻഡ് ടൈംസ് एवरीबॉडी ഹാസ് ടു ബി സേവ്ഡ് ബൈ ദി ബ്ലഡ് ദാറ്റ് വാസ് ഷെഡ് ഓൺ ദി ക്രോസ് ഓഫ് കാൽവറി അവരാ പാട്ട് പാടുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദേ ആർ ദി വൺസ് ഹു സിംഗ് ദി സോങ് എന്താ പാടുന്നത് വാട്ട് ആർ ദി സിംഗിങ് ഓ ഒമ്പതാം വാക്യം പുസ്തകം വാങ്ങുവാനും അതിന്റെ മുദ്ര പൊട്ടി പാനും നീ യോഗ്യ You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. Nee arukkapettu. You were because you were slain. Ninde raktham konde. By with your blood. Sadichu vaayikanam. Ninde raktham konde. With your blood. Sarva gotrathilum. From every tribe. Sarva gotram ennu parnjal etra gotram enna artham? And if every tribe means how many tribes? 
തർജ്ജമ ഭംഗിക്ക് വേണ്ടി തർജ്ജമക്കാർ അത് വെട്ടിക്കളഞ്ഞിരിക്കുക സർവ ഭാഷ സർവവംശം സർവ ജാതിയിൽ നിന്നുള്ളവരും From every tribe, every language, every people and every nation. Devathinai velakkuva. They have all been purchased for God. Devathinru sabayil evidunnulla ella angangal undanna? And from where all the people are in the church of God? Engena undanna evidunnilla ma? From where all? Sarva jaathi. From all nation. ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു നമ്മൾ ചിലർക്ക് ചില ജാതിയെ കാണുമ്പോൾ ഓക്കാനോ അങ്ങനെ ഓക്കാനമാണ് ദൈവത്തെ ഓർത്ത് സ്വർഗത്തിലോട്ട് പോവുകയായിരുന്നു നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുകയില്ല അവരവിടെ കാണാൻ പോവാം ദൈവം സകലരെയും സ്നേഹിക്കുന്നു സകല ഭാഷകളും ഫ്രം എവ്രി ലാംഗ്വേജ് സകല ഭാഷയിലും ആത്മാവിലും സത്യത്തിലും ആരാധിക്കാം ഫ്രം എവ്രി ലാംഗ്വേജ് യു ക്യാൻ വർഷിപ്പ് സ്പിരിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ട്രൂത്ത് sagala bhasha from all language sagala vamsha from all people na idu seri aano innu is it true today alla no etra jaathigal logathil undanu ningalku etra per kariya do you know how many nations are there in this world naattil nammal bus yathra cheyidittullarundu ketta etra per bus yathra cheyidu how many people have traveled in buses kerala thil in kerala നമ്മൾ ബസ് കാത്തു നിൽക്കും കൈ കാണിക്കും ബസ് നിർത്തും ചിലർക്ക് ഈ ബസ് കയറി കഴിയുമ്പോൾ and some people when they get on the bus keri irunnu kaliyumbo when they sit on the bus pin aaru kai kaanichal ee bus nirutirude na agrahu and when then they think that nobody if anybody shows the hand the bus should not stop kana njangal kari kaliyu because i am already on the bus enik engane edum അനേക വിശ്വാസികൾ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള നിലയിലായി പോയി ഞാൻ രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടു ഐ എം എന്റെ കുടുംബം രക്ഷിക്കപ്പെട്ടു വേണ്ടി ബസ് നിർത്തരുത് from every nation etra jaathigal undo ningalku aarkariyam logathile how many nations are there how many pusthangalu vaaikane you should read the books yan kanja raatri paranju pole poch samayam muluvan tv kandu kalayirude and just as i said don't waste your time watching tv nammal etra peru missions ne kurichulla pusthangalu vaaikka how many of you read the books about missions you american and cheap art pusthangalu kittum and in america these books are cheap ini pustham medikkan paisa illengi ningalude veetil ella internet undu internet free aayittu vaaikka ഈ പുസ്തകങ്ങളൊക്കെ and if you do not have the money to buy the books internet is free you can read it for free ലോകത്തെ കുറിച്ച് വായിക്കണം you should read about the world ലോകത്തെ കുറിച്ച് അറിവ് സമ്പാദിക്കണം you should also have the knowledge of the world കർത്താവ് ഇങ്ങനെ പറഞ്ഞു the lord said നിങ്ങൾ പറയുന്ന ഇനിയും കൊയ്ത്തിനെ ആ പറഞ്ഞാട്ടെ ഒത്ത അറിയാന്ന് പറയല്ലേ നിങ്ങൾ പറയുന്ന ഇനിയും കൊയ്ത്തിന് എത്ര മാസം ഉണ്ടെന്നാ അറിയാൻ മേലേ കൊയ്ത്തിന് ഇനി How much time is for the harvest? Moonu maasam ini undanna ningal parayana. And you say there is 3 more months. Ennal ningal thara mokki nokkiya. But if you raise up your head, koyithinu vendi wire is already ripe and to harvest. Amen. Vaikanam. Logathe kurichu padikanam. and you should read and you should learn about the world 24000 jaathigal undu logam. There are 24000 nations. ആന്ത്രപ്പോളജിക്കൽ സ്കോളേഴ്സിന്റെ അഭിപ്രായത്തിൽ ഇരുപത്തിനാലായിരം ജാതികളുണ്ട് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് തെറ്റായ തർജ്ജമയാ ജാതി നല്ല തർജ്ജമയാ മലയാളം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞല്ലോ സ്വാത്രം നല്ല തർജ്ജമയാ ജാതി എത്നിക് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് എത്നോസ് എന്ന ഗ്രീക്ക് വാർഡ് എത്നോസ് 
ദൈവത്തിന്റെ <laughs> ഉണ്ടാകണം <laughs> they need to be there ennal inna angana alla asathyam avar avaril illa but today it is not like that because the truth is not there 24000 jaathigal ulladil of the 24000 ethnic groups latest estimate 16000 jaathigalde madhyathil maatrame deiva sabhi ullu ennana according to the latest estimate of those only 16000 ethnic groups have got churches nu varnya adin artham endo What does it mean? No, 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 no. Ennairam jadikal dhe idhe idhe vera sapha illa. Of those 8,000 ethnic groups, they don't have a church. Vishwasiyal illa. They don't have believers. Do you care? Do you care at all? Amen. Or are you saying, okay, I'm already in the bus. It doesn't matter who gets in. What is our attitude? The heart of Jesus is broken. Karthav in the Gurdayam Thagar Nirikiya. The heart of Jesus is broken. Karanam Thaan Sagala Jadigal Kumvendi Anu Marichasa. Because He died for all ethnic groups. Sagala Pashakal Kumvendi Anu Marichasa. He died for all languages. Randairam Varsham Aitum One third of the nations. Randairam Varsham Aitum One third of the Jadi. ഇതു വരെ സുവിശേഷം കേട്ടിട്ടില്ല ഈവൻ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ബീൻ 2000 ഇയേഴ്സ് സ്റ്റിൽ 1/3 ഓഫ് ദി എത്നിക് ഗ്രൂപ്സ് ഹാവൻ ഹേർഡ് ദി ഗോസ്പൽ ഞാൻ ഇത് കേട്ടപ്പോൾ ഇത് മനസ്സിലാക്കിയപ്പോൾ പറഞ്ഞു കർത്താവേ എന്നാൽ ആവോളും ഇതിനൊരു പരിഹാരം ഉണ്ടാക്കുവാൻ ഞാൻ ശ്രമിക്കാം ആൻഡ് വെൻ ഐ ഹേർഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ സെഡ് ലോർഡ് വാട്ട് എവർ ഐ കാൻ ഐ വിൽ ട്രൈ ആൻഡ് മേക്ക് അപ്പ് ഫോർ ഇറ്റ് ഇത് ഇത് കേൾക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ ഞാൻ സുവിശേഷ വിലയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടി എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തെ the karthavinu vendi koduthirunnu and before that for the lord's ministry had given my life 1967 il aanu njan rakshikapadunnathu i 1967 i got saved njan arnavalathu maharaja college il oru vidyarthi aayirikkumbolana karthavinu rakshida vaayi swigarikkunnathu when i was a student at maharaja college in ernakulam i became a, a, a believer njan oru student political party ksu ennu parayna party ude oru sajeeva pravartakan aayirunnu i was a very political activist with ksu party uh my whole ambition was to become a lawyer and then enter into politics rashtriyathil kayaranam ennalladayirunnu ende jeevithathinte lakshyam my ambition in my life to just to somehow get into politics na lakshikapetta pol kartha va lakshyam aagraham eduthu kalanju suvishesham prasangikkuvana enna vilichu but when the lord saved me he took that ambition away and made me to preach the gospel mathramalla north india il suvishesham prasangikkan vilichu not only that made me to go in and preach in north india north india I did not know what North India was. ആ സമയത്ത് ഞാൻ കണ്ടിട്ടുള്ള ആകെ പോയിട്ടുള്ള ബാംഗ്ലൂർ വരെ ആയിരുന്നു. Until that time I only went up to Bangalore. എന്നാ ഞാൻ കർത്താവിനോട് യെസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു. At that time I said Lord yes. അത് 1967 ലാണ്. That was in 1967. എന്നാ ലാ ഞാൻ നോർത്ത് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ആദ്യം ചെല്ലുന്ന ആദ്യം ചെല്ലുന്ന എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ പെർമനന്റ് ആയിട്ട് ചെല്ലുന്നത് 19 വർഷം കഴിഞ്ഞു. And then I went to North India 19 years later. ആ uh, 19 years in your training lord devan ne vittu and the lord sent me through a training period of 19 years oru paranikku samayam illa 
and i did not have time to describe it in 1973 with my marriage i came to america minnesota ennu parayunna samsthanath oru varsham thamasichu bayangara thanupparunnu adond avadu odi raksha vittu california ilekku and minnesota was staying and because of very high cold we ran to california california valare compared to minnesota valare നല്ല ക്ലൈമറ്റ് ആണല്ലോ ആൻഡ് കമ്പയർ ടു മിനസോഡ കാലിഫോർണിയ ഹാസ് എ ഗുഡ് ക്ലൈമറ്റ് ദൈവം ഞങ്ങളെ അവിടെ അനുഗ്രഹിച്ചു The Lord blessed us there. ഞാൻ അതിനെ കുറിച്ചൊന്നും വിശദീകരിക്കാൻ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി സമയം എനിക്കില്ല. I do not have time to describe. എന്നാൽ ഈ മരിക്കൽ താമസിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോഴും പ്രധാവന്റെ ദാസൻ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ ഈ കംഫർട്ടിനെ നടുക്ക് ജീവിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോഴും ആ 67ലെ വെളി എപ്പോഴും ഹൃദയത്തിൽ പിന്നെയും പിന്നെ. When I was in that comfort zone that 1967 calling Uh, I, the, cho- the, the, the choice that i made was still breaking my heart ninde jeevathil oru veli undengile oru karyam nee cheyanam and if you have a calling in your life one thing you need to do repeat it repeat it darshanam valiya shrathil ezhudanam and you have to write your vision and devaruve adeyo ayinu oru kurva thanne nanu ende bhariye irunni darshanathe kuriche samsarikkum njangalde kunnungalodu parayum kunnungal aarikkumbole parayum ഡാരിയെ ദൈവം സുവിശേഷം പ്രസംഗിക്കാം വടക്കേന്ത്യയെ സുവിശേഷം പ്രസംഗിക്കാൻ വിളിച്ചതാണ് ഞങ്ങൾ റിപ്പീറ്റ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ഈവൻ വെൻ ദർ ലിറ്റ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ വെർ ലിറ്റ് ഓൾ വി വിൽ വുഡ് ഗോ ഇൻ ആൻഡ് സേ ടു ഈവൻ ആർ ചിൽഡ്രൻ ആൻഡ് റിപ്പീറ്റ് ദിസ് വിഷൻ ഓവർ സേയിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഡാരി ഹാസ് ടു ഗോ ടു നോർത്ത് ഇന്ത്യ വളരെ പറഞ്ഞു നീ ഇത് ഒരിക്കലും പോകാൻ പോകുന്നില്ല എന്ന് ആൻഡ് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ സെഡ് യു ആർ നെവർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഗോ അങ്ങനെയുള്ള പ്രവാചകന്മാർ ധാരാളം നമ്മൾ അടയ്ക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ആൻഡ് देयर ആർ മെനി പ്രോഫിറ്റ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ടുഡേ എന്നാൽ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ കൃപയാൽ ഇത് റിപ്പീറ്റ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു റിപ്പീറ്റ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ദൈവാത്മാവ് പ്രവർത്തിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങി ആൻഡ് ബൈ ദി ഗ്രേസ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഐ റിപ്പീറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് റിപ്പീറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ദി ഹോളി സ്പിരിറ്റ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ടു വർക്ക് ഇതിനിടയ്ക്ക് ഞാൻ ജോലി ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരുന്ന ക്രിസ്ത്യാ സംഘടനയായ വേൾഡ് വിഷൻ എന്ന സംഘടനയില ഒരു അപ്പർ മിഡിൽ മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ലെവലിലേക്ക് എനിക്ക് ഉയരുവാൻ കർത്താവ് തന്നു ആൻഡ് വേർ ഐ വാസ് ആർ വേർ വേർ ഐ വാസ് ഇൻ വേൾഡ് വിഷൻ ദി ലോർഡ് ഹെൽപ്പ് മീ ടു ഗോ ഇൻടു ദി ലെവൽ ഓഫ് അപ്പർ ലെവൽ മിഡിൽ ഓഫ് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ഐ വാസ് ഐ വാസ് ഇൻ ചാർജ് ഓഫ് എ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് വിത്ത് ഓവർ 300 എംപ്ലോയീസ് ബ്രിങ്ങിങ് ഇൻ ഓവർ 100 മില്യൺ ഡോളർസ് എ ഇയർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ സിഗ്നിഫിക്കന്റ് സൈസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ദൈവം അതിനുള്ള അവസരം തന്നു and the lord enabled me to be getting a very good position ഞാൻ വളരെ എൻജോയ് ചെയ്ത ഒരു മിനിസ്ട്രി ആണ് വേൾഡ് വിഷൻ നല്ല ഒരു സംഘടനയാണ് and i really enjoyed the ministry of world vision it is a good organization എന്നാൽ കർത്താവ് ഈ നോർത്ത് ഇന്ത്യയിലെ ഈ ഈ ഈ ഈ സത്യങ്ങൾ ഇതിനിടയ്ക്ക് ഞാൻ ഫുള്ളർ സെമിനാരിയിൽ പഠിച്ചു അവിടെ വെച്ചാണ് ഈ സത്യങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ മനസ്സിലാക്കിയത കർത്താവ് യേശുക്രിസ്തു ഇന്നും വരാതിരിക്കുന്നതിന്റെ ഒരു കാരണം ആയിരക്കണക്കിന് ജാതികളുടെ ഇടയിൽ സുവിശേഷം ഇതുവരെ ചെന്നിട്ടില്ല എന്ന് ഫുള്ളർ തിയോളജിക്കൽ സെമിനാരിയിൽ നിന്ന് ആദ്യമായിട്ട് ഞാൻ പഠിക്കുന്നത് and uh, when when i was learning at fuller theological seminary did i understand that the coming of the lord is tearing because this gospel is not preached in many many ethnic groups i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel and i never knew that there were many ethnic groups that did not hear the gospel on in india india il ithram jaadigal undo nanu arinju kudaa i did not know that there were so many ethnic groups in india idu ketta pol ende hrudayam thagarnu at that time my heart was broken aa njangal njan karthavinodu njan ende bhari njangal orumichu prarthichu paranju karthave indinte hithamengile njangal madangi poga and uh, we said me and my wife prayed and said that if it is your will we will go back njan 1984 upayogikkunna bible ippol upayogichondirikkunnathu oru divasam oru calculator adding machine eduthi njangal irunnu ingane calculate cheyidu adhi bible il ippol eduthi വെച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് and one day the same bible that we were using at that time i'm using it now we took the calculator and started to punch some numbers samayam labikkanayittu etra english ariyam melatha etra per undu nu ivide english ari english manasilagatham etra per undu othri per undu എനിക്ക് ഒട്ടു സമയമില്ല തർജ്ജമ ചെയ്യാൻ പോയി ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് മനസ്സിലാക്കാത്ത ഒരു എന്നോട് ക്ഷമിക്കാമോ പെട്ടെന്ന് ഞാൻ ഇതങ്ങ് പറഞ്ഞു തരും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങളെ ഞാൻ ഇവിടെ ഒത്തിരി നേരം ഉയർത്തിക്കേണ്ടി വരും let me just quickly forgive me uh, i wrote this down in the fly leaf of my bible i i i sat down and i said you know i'm a, i'm i am kind of a dreamer so i said okay in 1984 in india we had only 80 crores of people or 800 million people i said i'm going to go and preach to every one
He said, I'm going to arrange meetings where I'll preach to at least a thousand people a day. That's not difficult in India. Okay? I won't take a day's break. I'll preach to thousand different people a day. So I added it all up. 80 crores of people. Thousand people a day. How many days it will take to reach that many people? You know, I had absolutely no idea. You will know how stupid I am when I say this. I had absolutely no idea. You know how long it will take? If you preach to a thousand different people a day, don't take a day's break. It will take you only 2,191.78 years. I mean, it just blew me away. I had no idea. I had no comprehension of what 800 million was. 2,191.78 years. I said, God, what is the use in my going back? Let me live in comfort in Southern California. <laughs> then the Holy Spirit spoke. But what if there are 2,191 people doing it? Listen carefully. What if there are 2,191 people? This is just theory, just theory. Preaching to a thousand separate different people every day. How long it will take? Only one year. Only one year. This is when Matthew chapter 9, 37 and 38 became real to me. I hope you know that scripture where Jesus said, The harvest is plenteous, but laborers are few. I had no idea. In our land of India, of course, now we don't have 800 million people. We have over 1 billion people. Now, if you want to do the same thing, it will take you 2,739.728, six years. I said, God, what's the use in my going? Then the Lord said, I have given you all this training. Why don't you train at least a few? I said, all right, Lord. If you say so. So we went back to India as a family. We traveled in North India. We began to pray to the Lord. Lord, where should we go? Where should we go? We began to seek counsel. Then we came back. I'm, I, I went into my boss in World Vision and said, I'm leaving. I want to go to India and preach the gospel. This is in the beginning of 1985. And he said, George, you cannot leave now because we need to find somebody to take, replace you. You need to give us at least one more year so we can find somebody to replace, train and replace you. I said, all right. Gave one year notice. Began to wait on the Lord and pray. Brothers and sisters, when I say this, I hope you trust me. Because I know Malayali people are not. They don't trust. They always, they always try to find something behind. You know, somebody must have promised something to this man. Otherwise, he wouldn't leave this nice job and go, you know. Listen, there are a few people, at least there are a few people in the world who do listen to God and obey God's word. I hope you are one of those. It was not seeing anyone. It was not having received anybody's promise that I gave resignation notice. I still remember October of 1985. I knew I have only two more months of paycheck left, November and December. As pastor said, I knew I have two exceptionally bright boys from very childhood, exceptionally bright boys. I knew they were too old to be taken to the Indian school system. I knew they had to be left here for schooling. I, just like you would wonder concerning your own children, I wonder how will I send them to college? All these questions. I was in a meeting in Oregon, a city called Roseburg, Oregon, where I was speaking in a conference. Even my, during World Vision days, I would get invitation to speak in meetings and this was one of those. And one night the Holy Spirit very powerfully moved in the service. And there was a lot of people at the altar, an American church. A lot of people at the altar. I also went at the, knelt at the altar because all of a sudden this fear came on me. This sound came into my heart and said, you're a fool. You're a fool. You're living a comfortable Christian job. You're touching the world. Why should, why do you have to, how are you going to send your kids to good school? How are you going to take care of, how are you going to establish a training center? It's going to take money. Who is going to help? You're a fool. This fear came over me. I knelt and I was hiding and I was crying. People were ministering at the altar. Somebody came and laid their hand on my shoulder. 
just to know who it is, I turned around and looked, it was a lady. I didn't recognize her, an American lady. She prayed with me a little bit, and then she leaned over to my ear, because there was a lot of noise at the altar. Leaned over to the ear and she gently, very gently spoke, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord shall provide. I don't know who this lady is. The moment she spoke those words, I knew God spoke. You know such moments. You have experienced such moments. I knew God spoke. This came into my soul as a thunder. The fear lifted. I got out of there. Came back to my office. January 15, 1986 was my last day. On January 16th, I was on an airplane back to India. Leaving my wife and children in California. Began traveling because I don't know where to go. Traveling all through North India, from Gujarat all the way Bihar, all through North India traveling. But all the while God began, had begun to speak to my heart about UP, Uttar Pradesh. You know UP is the largest state in India by population. How many know that? You know how many people are there in UP? 180 million, 18 crores of people live in UP. You know how many that is, 180 million? That's more than half the population of the United States of America. It's three times the population of United Kingdom, Great Britain. It's more than double the population of France. Do you understand what UP is like? It's more than the population of all of Pakistan. It's a huge state. If it was an independent country, it would be the seventh largest country in the world. I had a burden for UP because UP is strategic. Did you know both Rama and Krishna were born in UP? According to Hindu mythology. Did you know Buddhism was born in UP? A lot of people think Buddha was Chinese. Because <laughs> we see a big fat Buddha in Chinese restaurants. <laughs> he gave his first sermon in UP. Near Varanasi. Jainism was born in UP. All the major pilgrimage places of Hinduism is in UP. All the major. Except for Ujjain. All the major Hindu pilgrimage places are in UP. Whether it is Rishikesh or Haridwar or Varanasi or Allahabad or Gangotri or Yamunotri. It's spirit, it is the spiritual headquarters of Hinduism. I don't have time to tell you all the details about it. God had been speaking to my heart so we began to visit in key places of UP. I met a man of God by the name Ray Iker who was the director of Operation Mobilization of India. I'll go anywhere, whenever I go I will meet with a Christian leader and share my mission. Ask their counsel. I met Ray. Highly respected Christian leader in India, an American but Indian by birth, born of American parents in India, but it loves India more than most of us do. I shared vision, my vision to Ray and Ray said, George, you must go see Dehradun before you choose a place in UP. I didn't want to go to Dehradun because there, I knew already Dehradun had a Bible college, Dune Bible College, DBC, where our brothers studied. I wanted to go to somewhere where there is nothing. But Ray said, no, you must go. You must go and meet those brothers. They'll help you. Normally, a Christian ministry will not help another Christian ministry. With shame and regret, I say that. That's, that's how it is. That's what I thought. But I went, I met the principal at that time. The principal was a man of God by the name Jacob Chaco, who is from Thotakada. And the main church, Pentecostal church in deep. Daradun was being pastored by Pastor T.J. Simon, another brother from near Koteo. Met these men and other teachers and shared the vision. To my surprise, they said, you must come here. We will help you. They said, we turn away so many students every year. We can admit only 15 students a year. At that time, they could admit only 15 students a year. Because that whole Bible college is supported by one church in Sweden. One local church in Sweden supports that whole Bible college. Shame on our churches. How many of our churches support a Bible college in India? A Swedish church. For the last 65 years, a church in Sweden is supporting a Bible college in India. Oh, I wish our people have that kind of burden for our own people. Many of our churches, if you want to, you can run a Bible school in India without any difficulty. As I told you the other day, maybe you won't be able to drive Mercedes, maybe you'll have to drive some Corollas. But let me tell you, your Mercedes will burn up just like the Corolla will burn up. <laughs> won't be any difference. But you'll have eternal, eternal rewards. 
Because I thought I was so holy as Jesus, I can have 12 disciples. 12 disciples. My vision was so small. Oh, young people, let me challenge you to have big visions. I have learned since then. My God is not a small God. My God is a big God. A great God. But my vision was so small. But even in that small vision, somehow God put this idea, I should have five acres of land. So I said, Jacob Chakosa, will you help me to find? So he immediately got in the Jeep. We drove out and we met a broker. He said, all right. He said, okay. I, as soon as I opened my mouth, he recognized that I came from America. <laughs> He's a smart businessman, you know, these North Indians, Punjabis. So he began to talk in dollars. <laughs> you want five acres? Okay, I'll get you five acres of land. You just come with 50,000 US dollars. At that time, dollar was 12 rupees. One dollar was 12 rupees. So he said it will cost you about one lakh to one and a half lakh of rupees per acre. That means you need, if you land, $50,000, come with it. $50,000? It's a huge amount of money for me. But I said, if it is really God who told me Jehovah Jireh, he'll provide. So we set up. We got the help of several people. We kind of set up, uh, took the initial steps to register an organization. You know, in India, you have to have registration with the government and formed a board of directors. And after a few months, I came back and uh, because all of my contact is in the West Coast, California and Texas, that area. So I came there. I began to travel to churches and began to speak to my pastor friends, Americans, and many of them began to respond. Slowly but surely, money began to come in. Major miracles began to happen. One major miracle happened was in June of 86. My former boss called me into his office in World Vision. And he said, George, we want to help you. I thought they were going to write me a check for a million dollars. Because they could if they want to. Said, the best thing we can do for you is spread the word about you. So we are going to publish an article in World Vision magazine. I said, praise the Lord. Then I thought, oh, maybe they'll put one line where nobody will see it. Because they are raising money for themselves. And that magazine goes to over a million households in America. I have to hurry up. But when the article came out, it was a two full page article. It even had my picture in it. <laughs> Not only that, miracle of miracles. At the bottom of the article, they said, if anybody want to help George, here is his address gave good news for India and our mailing address. It was a major miracle. They had never done that for anybody before. My God, when he says he is Jehovah Jireh, he means it. I began to get letters from all over the world. Literally all over the world I began to get letters. Got letters from Korea. I got letters from Africa. I got letters from Canada, South America, United States of America, practically every state. And most of the letters had checks in it. Praise the Lord. $10, $15, $20, $100. Soon we are coming to $50,000. I spoke for a, my ch for a friend that Shibu knows in Houston. It's a very large church, Grace Community Church. He's a friend. I have known him for many, many years. His name is Steve Riggle, a man of vision. Preached for him and he gave me $5,000 for the land. He's driving me to the airport the next morning and he turns to me and said, George, you need to do one thing. This is how Americans think, you know, we have to learn a lot from Americans. He said, if you really want to impact American churches, you must have somebody make you a model of the Bible college. American people need to see things before they will support you. I said to Steve, Steve, but I may be building one room or two rooms. He said, no, 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 sit down and make a big model of what you want? Dream big, he told me. <laughs> Dream big. Went home, called my pastor. I'm a part of an American church there. Told Steve said this, what do you think? Asked my pastor, said, that's a great idea. Why don't you come to my office? 
I drove to his office. Before I got there, he had already an architect in his office. Oh, we have to learn from them, you know. We have to learn from them. When you do something for the Lord, they do. That's why they are blessing this land. You and I are getting the result of that. There was an architect there already ready to help. I describe all these things, but there is one problem. This architect knows nothing about Indian architecture. <laughs> We said, that's fine. This is just a fundraising tool. We'll just say it's a concept. Oh, I don't have time to tell you the whole thing. His name is Karl Mantel. He is a brand new believer. He's from Europe, Austria. He had just come and come, started coming, attending our church. He was an alcoholic and a drug addict. He came to our church in Los Angeles in February. And the Lord amazingly saved him and set him free. And this is June. So he's a brand new believer. And he's full of enthusiasm. Speaks in beautiful European accent. When he found out, he, he asked me, George, can you describe the land you have for, you, for the Bible college in India? I said, we don't even have the land. We're just raising money. And this is what that European told me. Okay? In his European accent. He said, okay. I'm going to pray to the Lord. I'm going to ask him to show me the land he has for you in India. I didn't take him seriously. But he was serious. He fasted and prayed. Said, Ask, Lord, show me the land he has, you have for, in, for George in India. I don't see him for the next several months. I'm busy trying to raise this $50,000. By then, I think we had 30, 35,000, something like that. We met. Our board met. We have a board. Good News for India has a board here. We met and we were having dinner. My wife cooked chicken curry and all that. And we were sitting and eating. And as we were talking, my wife, by the way, worked for Bank of America for many, many years. She was a, an assistant vice president of Bank of America. Very brilliant woman. Thank God for her. She plans things. So we're sitting talking, she said, well, we are trying to raise $50,000 and buy five acres in India. Once we get these five acres, what are we going to do with it? Good question. <laughs> She's, then nobody answered anything. Then she went on to say, the Holy Spirit is really impressing me to tell us that if we ask the Lord, he will give us five acres for half that price. We'll have some money left over to start construction. Amen. Soon as she said that, my pastor, the Englishman, his, his name is Hurt Madewell. He said, that's God's counsel to us. Let's pray. Right around the dining table, held hands and prayed. I'm sitting there thinking, but Mr. Swain in Dehradun told me it will cost 50,000. I'm thinking, I'm not saying it. This is kind of a foolish prayer. But I kept my mouth shut. Brothers, it's good to keep our mouth shut when our wives speak sometimes. Next Sunday morning, my pastor announced it from the pulpit. A friend of mine who helps me printed this old-fashioned computer banner and hung it on the foyer of our church. It read, five acres for $25,000. Our little church in Los Angeles started praying seriously. But I don't believe this prayer. What is the evidence? If I really believed, I would have gone to India because I already had $30,000, $35,000. I wanted to go only after I have $50,000. So I'm running around. By September and uh, early October, I had $50,000. In the meantime, I told you, we got a lot of letters from all over the world. Jim, my friend, he's an American accountant. He's helping me. He will open the letters, answer it, receipt it, deposit it. He'll give me letters he thinks I should see because I'm on the road all the time. He brings me one letter torn and written on a torn piece of paper. Uh, very poor handwriting. Hard to read. He said, what do you think, George? This looks like a letter written by a child. I started reading it. It is written on a torn piece of paper. Very hard to read. But I started reading it and once you read it, you know it's not a child. The thought is not a child's thought. Uh, it said, uh, 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 dear such and such, I read about you in World Vision magazine. I know that letter by heart. I read about you in World Vision magazine. I'm a Southern Baptist. I know all of our miss missionaries are kicked out of India. What you're planning to do is a great thing. I want to know more about you. Signed, sincerely, Janie New. So I read this letter. God's Holy Spirit spoke to me just like he spoke through that sister in Roseburg in October. And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Something very significant will happen with this person. 
I said, Lord, but look at this letter. This person doesn't have, even have a piece of paper to write. But the Lord again said, something very significant will happen with this person. So I started immediately to reply. And as I started replying, the Holy Spirit said, she told you who she is. Tell her who you are. So I opened my letter. You know anything about Southern Baptists? I don't know whether you guys have Southern Baptists in Chicago or not. You know anything about them? They, are, they hate Pentecostals. <laughs> That's their chief characteristic. They, most of them say Pentecostals are speaking in tongues from the devil. So I opened my letter by saying, Dear Mrs. New, I'm an ordained Pentecostal preacher. Foolish thing to do, huh? to write to a Southern Baptist. But that's what the Lord told me. Send off this letter and waited for whatever the Holy Spirit said will happen to happen. July goes by, August goes by, September goes by, October goes by. No reply. I forgot about the whole thing. Then I thought, oh, that was just my thought. Maybe I ate a bad potato on that day and that's how I got that thought or something. Last week of October, I'm speaking in another conference in the city of Redondo Beach, California. Carl, by now finished it. He's a very busy man. He worked on the model all these years, all these months. By now he finished it. He wanted to surprise me. He heard I'm speaking there. So he brought it to the foyer of the church, decorated it. I hope I'm not boring you with this. This is so exciting for me. I walk into the church for here it's its beautiful model our Bible college in India it has people in it cars in it you know professional model you have seen them but what strikes me is this landscape is this landscape it's beautiful it comes down to you in tears it comes down to you in tears but on the right hand rear corner there is this mound this is hillock he made with steps on it like staircase you can climb on it Plateaus on top. This thing just jumps at me and I say, oh, this is Carl's imagination, but it won't go out of my mind. By now we have $50,000. I call my board. They said, go, buy the land. I'm flying out of Los Angeles, first week of November. The day before I'm to fly out, Jim, my friend, calls me about 8 o'clock. That day he was late picking up the mail. He calls me on the phone and said, George, you got another letter from that lady in Georgia. And she wants to give you $200,000 to build a Bible college. Lady I had never met in my life. It's a memorial gift to her late husband. I called the board members immediately. Said we have such an offer. The board members said, well if she doesn't want to run the school, we will accept it. If the gift is unattached, un no strings attached, no problem name. So they, I, we authorized one of the members of the board who, who was a um, at that time a, a major director of World Vision since went on to become the executive vice president of Food for the Hungry a good friend of mine Rory Starks authorized him to deal with because you have to know how to deal with rich people you don't deal with them normal ways I didn't know any of these things though I worked in World Vision all these years I wrote a thank you note to her saying our board will get in touch with you I posted in New York I flew off to India well, Jacob Chaco and DBC, Pastor T.J. Simon, all of them. And one of my nephews, I have a sister's son, his name is Babu. He has been a missionary in UP for 15, 16 years. Knows Hindi fluently. I don't know Hindi much. So I had asked him to come and help me. And we are looking around and they had already looked for so many plots. Mr. Swain, one of the brokers in Daradun, had looked for, even with 50,000, nothing we can afford. Let me rush. We looked over a month. But we are always praying the same prayer. My wife and I started way back. And that was this prayer. Lord, lead us to the exact place you want us to be. God answers prayer. We looked all over a month. About middle of December 1986. December 1986. A Hindu gentleman comes to us. And said, we heard you are looking for a place to build a school. I would like to help you. An elderly gentleman who is a Pradhanji of Kulan village. He said, I know a place after. I'd like you to come with me. Got into the Jeep. Brother Jacob Jacko was driving it. Pastor TJ Simon is in it. His wife is in it. My nephew Babu is in it. There are several others crowded in the Jeep. We drive out to the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Katare. These are people this brother knows. That's why I'm telling this. They are all in the Jeep. We drive out to this place called Kulan village. The Pradhanji tells us turn left. We turn left. 
The road is so terrible. See the property. He didn't need to ask me. There it stands in the right hand corner. This brother has seen it. Ask him. Right hand corner. There is a little mound with steps on it. My nephew and I, we ran and got on top of the, this thing. Still don't know who made it, when it was made. We had a good prayer time. By then this old man and the group comes up. We ask him how big is the land. He said it's a little over five acres. How much money is it? I have no idea. If you're interested, I'll take you to the owner. Yeah, we are interested. We drive down to the city. It's owned by Dr. Goyal, a medical doctor in downtown Daradun. Actually, his parents owns it. After initial conversation, we asked Dr. Goyal, how much is it? He said, it's over five acres. How much money do you want? This man asked us this ridiculous low price. So I asked him, you know, I'm so, such a fool. So I just asked him, what's wrong with your property, Dr. Goyal? <laughs> and the man smiled and said, there is something wrong. Did you notice it is on the other side of the dry river? But yeah, I, I noticed that. Well, if it was on this side of the river, but I would get five times the money because on this side of the river, but it is owned commercial and residential. On the other side, it is owned agricultural. And he said, did you notice the mango trees? Yeah, we had noticed about two dozen scrawny little mango trees standing there. He said, my father purchased this land many years ago to make it into an orchard. He planted and planted and planted and mango trees are all over Daradun. Nothing, nothing will take root in this property. God had a purpose for this land. Yes. Nothing will take root. They are sick and tired of it. They want to somehow get rid of it. I asked, we asked them, would you sign a contingency agreement? We'll apply for a permit to build a school there. If we get the permit, would you sell it for the same price? He said, sure. He wanted to expand his clinic so badly. We hired the best lawyer in town. We hired the best architect in town. We applied for the permit, gave a six month deadline. In India, nothing happens in six months. You know that, right? Nothing happens. In, but we said, if it is the Lord, it will happen. We surveyed the land, it was 5.9 acres. In six months, we had all the necessary permits, all the zoning changes. And Mr. Goel sold the property including the legal fees, including the fee of the lawyer and the initial cost of the architect. 5.9 acres. You want to guess the price? $25,000. He said, my God, a God, prayer answering God. Back in the meantime, in the back in the meantime, Mrs. New, she is a Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist Foreign Mission heard she's going to give $200,000 to a Pentecostal preacher. They were not very happy. She has given millions to them. But they wanted all of it. <laughs> they tried to stop her. But you know, God had spoken to her. She at that time was a 80-year-old woman, a 79-year-old woman. She and her sister eventually ended up giving us half a million dollars. Hallelujah. Is my God a big God? Hallelujah. I didn't need to ask anybody. When my God said, Jehovah Jireh. He means business. He means business. When he tells you something, he keeps his word. He keeps his word. He is a promise keeping God. Not because of the money. That's not what. Now I have grown in my faith. Half a million is nothing. It's nothing. For my God, it is nothing. A million or two million is nothing. Whatever you need, he will give it to you. Whatever you need. That is the promise in his word. Not according to your greed, but according to your need. Amen. Listen, hundreds of thousands of dollars have been given to this hand by people I don't know. Just this last month, I got hundred thousand dollars. I'm saying it for the glory of God. Not one penny sticks in my pocket. Not one penny. I can say it with absolute confidence. Every penny goes to the Lord's work. And when you do that, the Lord honors you. When, the, when you do that, money will flow through your hand. In the short time, ask this brother. New Theological College, that is how it is known. The full name is Luther W. New Junior Theological College. Some people ask me, is it Lutheran? No, that was the name of the gentleman. Janie's husband, Luther W. New Junior. That was her condition, that it be named. Americans have some quirks like that. Fine, praise the Lord. Who will give half a million dollars? Who among us will? Even if we have, how many of us will give? Since then, hundreds of thousands of dollars have come through these hands. We have now the only fully accredited 
full gospel Bible college in all of North India. For God's glory, I'm saying, over 850 graduates have gone out. We offer all the way from basic Hindi courses. It's an issue that brother raised. Some of them, if, you're, if you train them too much, they won't go to the... You need to train laborers at different level. But let me close by saying what the Lord did for my family. The Lord not only blessed my ministry, but when he said Jehovah Jireh, he meant my personal affair also. If you will give up a little for the Lord, he will bless you with so much. Both my sons went to the university on scholarship. My older son is exceptionally brilliant. Second year on, he, he, he got into California Institute of Technology. If you know anything about universities in America, California Technology, California Institute of Technology is harder to get admission to than MIT. Harder. Because it's much smaller. Second year on, he was bringing money home and giving me money. Second year on, he was, when, you know, $30,000 is a year, at that time it was $30,000 a year to send a student to Caltech. My son was bringing home money second year on. His scholarship was so good. I'm not bragging. I'm saying it for the glory of God. He graduated as the top student in Caltech in chemistry and the best go to Caltech. Not the average, the best goes to Caltech. He was the top student in chemistry. I wish every one of you could see the picture of his graduation from Caltech. You know what he had on his hat? The motorboard of his hat? He had Jesus written on the motorboard of his hat as he went up to receive top honors from Caltech. He didn't tell us he was going to do this. We sit in the crowd. Somebody pointed out and said, look at that boy. He has Jesus on his head. Motor boy. We turn around and we look. It's our son. Jesus, big letters written on the motor. Walked up and received great honors. Listen, brothers and sisters, I thought American universities recruited only football players and basketball players. That's what I thought. But we began to discover 19, 1995 Christmas time was exciting time for us. We began to discover American universities want bright kids. We got calls from all the major universities of America. I'm not exaggerating. All the Ivy League schools called us saying, we want your son. We want your son. We want your son. What will it take for you to send your son to our school? But my son always had a desire to go to Harvard. You know, Harvard is the best university in America. He always was praying. He never told us this. But he had a prayer. He was praying. And lo and behold, Harvard University calls us. Harvard University calls this poor preacher and says, will you send your son to us? We will give him $60,000 a year in scholarship. He can do whatever he wants. He can do MD, he can do PhD, he can do whatever he wants. June 7th, he graduated with his PhD as the top student in his class. I hope you don't mind if I read one sentence from his acknowledgement of his thesis. Again, I'm not doing this as bragging. God knows my heart. But I want to make sure you young people understand that if you honor God, God will honor you. May I read one, one couple sentences from the acknowledgement? The most special gratitude I reserve for my family. My brother Rennie has been a continual source of encouragement and inspiration through the years. My parents gave me a thirst for reading and learning before I can remember. In my mother, I could not ask for a more devoted friend. Her kindness and love played a huge part in the creation of this thesis. In my father, I have watched masterful preaching from the pulpit since I was a boy. I can only try to emulate his power, sincerity and clarity when I speak in scientific circles. I have watched him forsake a comfortable lifestyle and lucrative occupation to commit to the vision of founding a theological college in India, now perhaps the finest Christian school in the country. It is no wonder that my father is responsible for many orphanages and over 200 churches being planted in India within the last 10 years. If my life can impact a fraction of the number of people he has, I'll count it a success. Listen to the last sentence. Most importantly, my family has taught me that what is earthly will fade away 
And the glory of science is the glory of God. This was submitted. This was submitted to Harvard Chemistry Faculty. I cannot even understand the title of it. It is too difficult. I'm saying it for the honor of God. Listen, when God says Jehovah Jireh, He will honor you. He will bless you beyond you can contain. I can go on. I don't have time. I don't have time. How can we speed the coming of the Lord? Thousands of people groups, thousands of languages in India still is without gospel. Brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility. I cannot do it alone, but together we can do it. Together we can make a difference. Oh, I beg you, don't spend everything on yourself. Don't spend everything on yourself. Spend something for the kingdom. If you spend everything for yourself, one day you will stand before him and you will be ashamed. I'm not asking you to give me anything. By God's grace, I don't need a thing. But God has supplied. Of course, I'm, our ministry needs help. And if you give, we will accept. But help brothers like him. Help the other brothers who are coming. There are many, I know some, you know, there are some people who misuse what you give. I know that. But because one or two or three misuse, do you want to judge everybody who is laboring? There are hundreds of men and women in North India who are suffering for the Lord. Here is a man sitting there. I'll recommend him to you. He works in, 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 in Punjab. I'll recommend him highly, Pastor Sam George. I'll recommend this brother highly. Help somebody. Do something. Do something. Because one day we will stand before the Lord. And he will hold us accountable. God didn't send us to America to live in comfort. Yes, comfort. I like comfort too. I like, I like. My wife picks out nice suits for me. I like that. Somebody commented that I dress very nice. All credit goes to my wife. I like that. Comfort, that's nice. But don't spend everything on yourself. How many of us tithe? Oh, I wish I can preach. But I don't want to do it. You know, if you have been here a few years, if you are brand new, I know it's struggle. Because I came, I went through the same struggle. I worked three jobs. Because of, though I had a, yeah, I came to America saying I'm MA. The first job I got was as a janitor in a rest home. Have you worked as a janitor in a retirement home? I can still smell it. <laughs> I know, if, you, if you're new, we struggle. But after a few years, most of us are leading comfortable lives. But we haven't made choices. Are we going to spend everything on us? Or are we going to spend something for the kingdom? Speed the coming. You can speed the coming of the Lord by investing your dollars in ministries that are doing good things. And there are many. There are many. Speed the coming. Not just hope for it. Not just lead a holy life. But speed the coming. Would you close your eyes? I wanted to stop before nine. I'm sorry it took a few more minutes. Would you close your eyes? Has the Lord called you to do anything for him? Some of you have that call on your life. You're holding back because you're afraid. Like I was afraid. Brother, sister, if the Lord calls you, he will not forsake you. He will not forsake you. Step out in faith. Make sure the call is from God. Then step out in faith. Maybe it is to teach Sunday school. Maybe it is to start a track distribution ministry. Maybe it is to do a short term missions. Maybe it is to take a couple months leave and go on a short term mission. Whatever it is. Do it. The Lord will honor you. Some of you need to tell the Lord this evening. Lord I want to do all I can. To hasten your coming. To speed your coming. To reach one tribe. One jati, one people group, one language group with the gospel. I want to do something. I don't know what to do, but here I am. I give myself to you. Show me what to do. Bring into my life a ministry that I can pray for. A ministry that I can support. If you will sincerely say that to the Lord, the Lord will show you. Let us not be just hearers of the word, but let us be doers of the word. More than anything else, I encourage you, I beg you this evening, become people 
who pray for missions people pray for india cry for india oh i wish i had time to tell you the great things god is doing in india god is moving in india god is moving in india i believe within the next few years we are going to see some major changes in india i believe thousands tens of thousands of dalits are coming into the faith it's already beginning to happen i don't have time to tell you about it i hope you read and you find out but we must pray we must pray jesus said pray ye to the lord of the harvest to send forth workers into the harvest field who will this evening say oh, yes lord i will pray i will pray if you send me i'll go i'll give who will say that well every eye is closed every head is bowed i'm going to close quickly is there one person this evening who will say to the lord lord if you call me i will go whether on a short term mission or a long term mission i will go is there one person who will say that if, if there is one person would you just stand up to your feet maybe a young lady maybe a young man maybe a young boy lord if you call i will go i will go thank you thank you thank you thank you very much for standing i am going to close quickly who will stand up and say i am going to give more to missions like never before I'm going to give more to missions like never before. I'm going to give more. I'm going to give until it hurts. I'm not going to spend everything on my comfort. I'm going to give more. Not to me. I'm not asking for me. I'm asking you to give to the Lord's work. Thank you for standing. And finally, who will say and some of you standing may want to say this also. And if you want to say it, lift your hand. And if you're sitting already, you stand up. Who will say I'll pray more for missions? particularly pray more for india our mother country if we don't pray who will pray for our land brothers and sisters it is a very important responsibility thank you for standing father god you saw the people who are making decisions lord i don't know what all the decisions they are making but you see them lord i pray you bless them you honor them help us oh lord to speed the coming of the lord either by going or by sending or by giving or by praying or by doing one or more of the above help us oh lord thank you for speaking to our hearts lord i want to thank you for this church for pastor and and every person who came to hear your word lord i as as your servant i bless them in your name right now lord i bless them in your name and i ask you to stretch forth your mighty arm and bless these people oh lord jesus bless the city of chicago bless every single one of our brothers and sisters in the city bless every church every congregation oh lord lord may we do something for you before it is too late thank you for speaking to us in jesus precious name we pray amen and amen